And honestly, I'm just so excited to have you guys here tonight. The last time that we met up, we, on November 16th, we talked about the gospel. The gospel can save the unbeliever. The gospel can take a lukewarm Christian out of lukewarm water yeah. and put them into a passionate faith. Yeah. And the gospel takes the passionate believer and goes out and puts them into the world. And they will live a fire, a fire passionate life just because of the gospel. Because you see, we don't need any more hype. We don't need any more churches. We don't need any more programs. We don't need any more nights like this. Come we on. just need to pick up our word, read what God has done for us, and when we see that, when we read that, when we believe it, your life will be changed. Amen. But tonight we're not talking about that. That was last time. Today we're talking about something a little bit different, a little bit more practical, a little bit more relatable to our life. And before I just jump into that, I actually want to do a little demonstration. So Mazin's going to come up. He's my little guinea pig for this <coughs> two-second thing. It's a little bit tight in here, so bear with us. Sorry, we're going to have to stand right here. Hopefully you guys can see. I'll stand over here. Okay, so this is Mazin, everyone. Hi. Hi. So you're Hi. This may look a little funny. This may sound a little funny. You can smile, you can laugh, but let's honestly focus on what is going on here what Mazin is going to do, because I believe that the Lord put this imagery on my heart about a year and a half ago, and he prompted me to share it with you guys tonight. So for the sake of this talk, just assume everything I say is true. That door over there, specifically that little line in the middle of the door, that is true north. That is where Mazin needs to go. That is where Mazin's going to go. That is where Mazin wants to go. That is where he needs to go. That is where his destiny is calling him to go. And he's going to go to that door, that specific line. And you're just going to walk there. But before you do that, this is how you're going to do it. You can take one step forward and two steps sideways. Don't start yet. One step forward, two steps sideways. And you're going to do that until you hit that door or until you can't walk anymore. So go ahead. See how far you get. Go around anything that you need to go around. Keep going. <laughs> if you can't do two steps, just keep going until you hit the wall. <laughs> All right. So you can't go anymore? No. Nope. All right. Everyone give Mousin a round of applause. <laughs> Here has uh, who here knows what a compass is? Who here has ever used a compass? They come in many forms, they come in many shapes and sizes. I'm talking about the handheld compass north, mm -hmm. east, south, west, the little degrees, the little numbers. And basically, essentially, what it is, it helps you navigate. You follow whatever coordinate you need, and it'll bring you to where you need to be. Mm -hmm. Say you want to go north, pretend that door is north. You want to go north. So you point it north, north 10 degrees, whatever it is, and if you follow it, it doesn't matter if you walk one kilometer, 10 kilometers, a thousand kilometers, a million kilometers, when you get to where you need to go, you'll be exactly where you need to be because you've followed those coordinates, you've followed that compass. So let's tie in what we just saw with Mazin. I'm going to go back here for a second. That door. Let's assume that's true north. That door is God. That door is heaven. That door is Christian living. That door is where we want to go. That door is where we need to go. That door is where we God wants us to be. And this right here. This is our compass. This is our compass. Prayer is our compass. Obedience is our compass. And when we follow it, when we look to it, when we obey it, we will walk towards God the way that we need to be. And wherever in life we go, whatever in life brings us, we will end up with God where God wants us to be, exactly where He needs us to be, when He wants us to be. But this is what happens in our life. Maybe you can see where I'm going. We come out, we're all pumped up. 
It's the new year, the new me. You know, I'm going to get serious with God this year. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to read my Bible every day. I started the Bible plan. You know, I'm so pumped. I came here today. I'm going to get revived. And we come to events like these. We go to events like that. And we, you know, we just get pumped up. And then we say, okay, God, you're over there. I'm walking north towards God. I'm going to walk towards God this year. And then we start walking towards God. Good intentions. These are great intentions. We walk, we walk, we walk. And then sin happens. And we're off course. But then we walk a little bit more. And we're still walking towards God. And then compromise comes in the way. And then before you know it, you are so off course. You end up somewhere down the road and you're wondering, how did I get here? How did this happen? I had the best intentions. I had the right intentions. I wanted to come after God. Why am I no longer anywhere where I need to be with God? Why am I stuck in my sin again? Why am I feeling the same things that I'm feeling every two months? I'll tell you why. It's because of your sin. You see, we can get all pumped up and we can come and we can walk towards Christ and then we slip into sin. And I'm not talking about the sin that, oh, the petty sin that like, oh, I messed up today, God forgive me. I'm talking about the sin that we drag with us that we never truly repented of that we said, you know, okay, God, I'm going to come after you but I'm going to go watch pornography right after this. I'm not going to do it as much as I used to do it. But I'm going to allow it to happen because I've been good. Or God, I'm going to, I'm going to walk after you and I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to hang out with that girl again that I shouldn't be hanging out with. Or I'm going to walk and hang out with the next guy that I shouldn't be hanging out with. I'm going to drink this thing that I shouldn't be drinking. I'm going to act the way. I'm going to be holding on to my sin while I'm walking towards you, God. And we call ourselves Christians. We say, we're following the one true living God. But Jesus says in Luke 6, 46, Why do you call me Lord if you don't even do what I say? This is something what we need to think about tonight. And I believe that God, tonight, He's going to draw the lines in our hearts and our minds. He's going to say, pick a side. Enough of this phony Christianity where we're just walking towards God, carrying our sin, thinking we can do whatever we want. God has a holy standard. We don't like to talk about it. We don't like to tell people what to do. But God says, this is the way you'll live. This is the fruit you'll bear if you are of me. So to go back to the compass, maybe we can kind of see where I'm going with this. That compass has degrees. And this is how, this is why I love the, 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 the imagery of the compass. Because if you follow it, exactly to the T. You'll be exactly where you need to be. But if you go off by just one degree, at first it doesn't seem like much because you're still walking in the general direction. You're still walking towards God. But over time and over distance, you start to drift apart. The drift factor is huge. And when you get to where you think you need to be, that's when you realize how far off you actually are. So that's what God put on my heart. And that's what really helped me focus. You know, we can't be carrying that sin with us. If we're going to truly follow Christ, guess what? It's going to be difficult. It's going to take self-denial. Jesus says, pick up your cross. Deny yourself. And follow me. Forget what the world's telling you. Forget what the culture's telling you. Forget what everything else is telling you. Follow me. And just like, you know, it's not just sin that just gets us off course. Like sin that we commit, like sexual sin or the sin that we shouldn't do. It's also just focus. Sometimes, you know, I'm walking towards God and, you know, school's a little bit more enticing right now. I want to get good grades. I want, those are great. But the second you take your eyes off the Lord, you started to drift. And nothing is more important than God. Your grades are not more important than God. Sometimes we walk towards God and we want, you know, I just want to become financially stable by the age of 30 and then I'll get serious in the church and blah, blah. If you are focused on something else other than God, you have already walked off course. And you're setting yourself up for the drift factor that you're just going to end up in the middle of nowhere and wonder, how did I get here? 
I'm telling you guys, we need to focus our eyes on the cross all the time. If you're young, I wish someone told me this when I was 18. I'm 29 now. I wish someone told me this when I was 18. You know why? Because every decision that I have made until now would have been stemmed from what God wants me to do. I'd be walking towards God and He would show me, you know, do this, do this, do this. Let everything that you do, focus on God first of all. Everything that you do, stem from the Christ. Stem from your walk from Christ. Everything that you do. You will never go wrong. That's why we call this seeking the kingdom. Because in, in Matthew 6.33 it says, Seek me above all else. Don't worry. I got you. Hmm. Let's turn the volume down this side. So tonight, the Lord put a verse on my heart that I want to share with you. And if you've known me the past six or seven years, you've heard me say this verse quite often. And guess what? This verse is not new. That's the great thing about God. He never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. His words are true. His words we can trust. We, they guide us. So I'm going to read it right here. Matthew 7, 13. You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad and the gate is wide for those who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow and the road is difficult and only a few ever find it. Let's read that again. You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad and its gate is wide for the many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow, and the road is difficult, and only a few will ever find it. My question here tonight, are you guys amongst the few that is going to find it? I'm not here to make you, you know, confirm nor deny your salvation. That's not my job. But my job is to come and to call ourselves, because in 2 Corinthians it says, examine yourselves to see that you are in the faith. That is what we are called to do. Like I said, God has a standard. When you follow Christ, you live the way Christ lived. And we're not perfect. That's what mercy is for. But when we follow Christ, we will live the way. Like in the, He talks about the, the, what the tree with the branches. If he doesn't produce good fruit, I'm going to cut it off and throw it in the fire. We don't like to hear these things. We don't like to talk about these things. Because they hurt, but they also cut the heart. And they focus our eyes on the cross. They focus our eyes on what truly matters, which is the gospel and living for Christ. Above all else, above all things. Period. And coming here tonight... You know, I'm not here to make you feel better about yourself. I didn't come here to hang out. I didn't come here, you know, to make you have a good day. The only thing I came here for is that you come here, you hear what God has to say, you be changed. That is the only thing I care about. I care about you guys, but that's the only thing I care about right now. And I and I know being in this room right now and talking. The Lord is putting things on my heart that I need to change. That I need to, the things that I'm dragging with me on my walk that keeps tripping me up. And I know other people in this place, God is putting things on your heart too. And you know exactly what it is. I don't need to tell you what it is. There's a great psalm that I love. I used to pray all the time. Psalm 139. If you watch the Facebook video, I said it there. Psalm 139, verse 23 and 24 says, Search me, O God. Know my anxious heart. If there's anything in me that offends you, correct me and lead me on the way to everlasting. This is what we need to pray. This is what we need to do. The Lord is calling us to more. Just because we go to church on a Sunday, just because we go to a Bible study on a Wednesday, and just because we came here tonight, or maybe because we're playing in worship, that doesn't mean anything. I went to church for 18 years of my life. I played on the worship team at my church for 13 years. I only met Christ six years ago. Wow. And I was in the church. I was doing the church thing. I was the church boy. 
I played every single week. And it's not about being harder and going better, doing better things to God. It's just truly getting to the point where you actually encounter God. That you actually meet Him face to face. Do you remember the time that you met Him face to face, figuratively? And He changed your life, He changed your heart. If you can't, then I would examine yourself. No one in this room can claim to be changed by Christ if you're still acting in the old ways. If you're still holding on to the same sin for the past one, two, five, ten years, and it's never changed, I would examine your heart. I fear for you. Because God's word is very explicit and clear. I'm going to call JD up. He's just going to play in the background. Because I believe, you know, I can talk all day long. I can say, you know, we need to repent of our sins. We need to come before Christ, which is true. But that doesn't do anything. There has to be a response. There has to be a personal response. There has to be the willingness to get down on our knees and on our faith and say, Lord, change my heart. Lord, I've been following you for five years, and I'm not even changed. Open my eyes, God. Open my eyes to eternity. I used to go to church, and you know, all I thought Christianity was just, just going to church, being good, not swearing, just, just being what everyone else is doing. And then I started to read the Word of God. And I started to get confused, because I don't see people living the way this says to live. I don't see people doing what this says to do. And it was a struggle. But guess what? The narrow path, it is difficult. It's a lonely path. And only a few will find it. Don't be ignorant, thinking that you're walking on the narrow path when you're just walking on the wide path, blissfully not knowing what's going on. You have the word. And tonight, if you're here tonight, God is calling you out. God is talking to your heart. I always tell my friends this, if, if you are here, this message is for you. You see, we, can, we can't just hear a message like this and then go on with our day. We are now accountable to the word of God. Will you respond? Will you focus your eyes upon the cross today? So as J.D. sets up, just play in the background or something. We're going to we're going to put our money where our mouth is tonight. We're going to put our faith in front of us. We're not just going to yeah, yeah, no, no. If there's sin in your life tonight that you need to be freed from, if there's addiction that you need to be cut off from, if there's something that needs to be done cuz it's not right with God, seek the Lord and we're going to pray cuz God is going to break chains tonight. But only if you want it. And I believe that everyone here came tonight because you want more of God. Who else would come to this place on a Saturday night if they didn't want more of God? So we're going to pray and we're going to open up the front. There's not much room. But if you want someone to pray for you, we'll have a few people up here to pray. Mazin's going to be up to pray. We'll have Timmy. Timmy's going to play on the cajon. We're going to have a few people up here to pray. And if you just want someone to pray, just raise your hand. Whatever and anything, anything's going to go. Seek the Lord right now in your own heart. Don't waste this moment. We are here before the Lord. <clears throat> Psalm 139. Search me, O God. Know my anxious thoughts. If there's anything in me that offends you, point it out. Show me. So I can walk upon the everlasting. <clears throat> Come on, guys. Today, tonight, this year, we're not walking two months fire for Christ and then falling back onto the wide path. Enough of that. We don't need that. The church needs people who are on fire for Christ. Amen. We're going to live it out. You know what Len Leonard Ravenhill said? My favorite quote. says, One day, someone's going to pick up this book, believe it, and put us all to shame. Let's live the way Christ intended. It's not impossible. 
That's what grace is for. We can mess up. But let's not be addicted. Let's not have habitual sin in our lives just hanging out with us, dragging us down. Every time we walk towards Christ, we go off course. We don't need that no more. Open your heart to Christ. Everyone has something going on. Will you be honest? God already knows. Pray that God does not harden your heart tonight. I'm telling you, there's breakthrough in this place.